To be quite frank, I think this is a bit like wishful thinking. What I do expect and what I do think is needed is that we decarbonize the power sector. And that is a, will be a huge achievement. And in doing so, you need a lot of renewables, you need much more energy efficiency than we have now, not only in the developed countries but also in the developing countries. And that will be really, really something to do. What we at the IEA have modelled and expected that the world will still be using a lot of fossil fuels by then. But the point is, how are they going to use it? Are they going to use it in a cleaner way than now or not? That's one thing. The other thing is that we expect much more renewables to be there than there are now. We expect much more energy efficiency, not only in the production of energy, but also in the transportation and in the use of energy. And we expect that there still will be nuclear energy. You want a very short, clear answer? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. Carbon pricing and putting a price on carbon will be absolutely necessary to see to it that we redirect investments, redirect investments to come and get to a cleaner energy mix. And I think this is essential. The other thing that is essential is that there are a number of industries who use a lot of energy and it's absolutely necessary and produce emissions. So moving forward, the CCS and CCUS agenda will be vital as well. You know, when, when I'm talking about energy efficiency in developing countries, they tell me, dear Maria, what are you talking about? We just want energy because we have millions and millions of people who still do not have access to energy. And then my answer to them is, yes, that's true. But you can't just, you can't think that just by building another coal-fired power plant and by building more of this uh, infrastructure that you solve the problem of energy access. So this is one part of the answer. And if you want to have energy access and provide energy to all of your people, do it in a way that you do it in a more efficient way. Because the most, how shall I put it, the best energy is the energy you don't use. And you can make decisions to use your energy in a more efficient way, phase out fossil fuel subsidies for instance. And I would strongly commend them to, to, uh, recommend to do that now with low oil prices. That's the moment to phase out fossil fuel subsidies. And that's again part of energy efficiency because that brings down the use of energy. You know, in general, I think there is a huge, there is a huge future for renewables. But you know, not everywhere the sun is shining as bright as, for instance, in Peru. Not everywhere the wind is blowing the right, the right way or there's enough wind. Uh, not everywhere you have geothermal, not everywhere you have hydro. So see to it that you use the, the, the resources, the renewable resources you have is very, very important and there's still a lot to gain there, yes. In our view, this will be part of the energy system, part of the electricity system. We will need, of course, the electricity system as it is now, but there will be also a change in the system. For instance, when we look into cities, where cities in the future will not only be consuming energy, but will also be producing energy. Look into the, the power of power, the power of electricity. Well, is it, is it possible to have decentralized power generation? Well, we think this, but you have to look into your whole system. Your electric vehicles will be part of that as well. So it will be a huge challenge to find the right balance between the distributed generation and the central generation, but both will be needed in the future.